The Coconuts. Check into a hotel full of fun and laughter in this hysterically funny film starring the Marx Brothers. Mr. Hammer, I think I know what's wrong with the hotel. I think I know, too. You're fired. Get your hat and my coat and get out. Ah, oh, gentlemen, husbandmen. Ah, oh, how do you do? How do you do? What are you boys giving me the runner out? Uh, you, know, you know what an auction is, eh? I come from Italy on the Atlantic Ocean. I hope I still got my underwear on. The Marx Brothers star in The Coconuts. Now one of my own compositions by Victor Herbert. <laughs> careful too long. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you brought that up, just how long have you been careful? Don't try to hide. I know you're in that closet. Did you see me go in the closet? No. Am I in the closet now? Well, no. Then how do you know I was in the closet? Your Honor, I rest. 
my case right here. Are you the floor walker here? What? I want to register a complaint. Why, what's the matter? Matter enough. Do you know who sneaked into my stateroom at 3 o'clock this morning? Who did that? Nobody. And that's my complaint. Horse Feathers, starring the Marx Brothers. Members of the faculty, faculty members, students of Huxley and Huxley students. I guess that covers everything. What this college needs is a good football team. And you can't have a good football team unless you have good football players. My boy, I think you've got something there. And I'll wait outside until you clean it up. I'm looking for two football players who always hang around here. We always hang around here. Well, but that's we all don't... I want to know. Now, I want you to sign this agreement. Hey, there's nothing on this paper. That's all right. We'll fill in something later. Hey. You've got the wrong football players. Did my son tell you you had beautiful eyes? Why, yes. Told me that, too. Tells that to everyone he meets. You realize what it means if Huxley loses his game? It means shame, disgrace, humiliation. And besides, you're crazy if you don't play the ace. Hey, bring that back here. I've got to stay here. But there's no reason why you folks shouldn't go out into the lobby till this thing blows over. I'll see you at the theater tonight. I'll hold your seat till you get there. After you get there, you're on your own. Hello? Hello, yes? No, he's not in yet. All right, well, goodbye. That was for you again. I wonder what ever became of me. I should have been back here a long time ago. They got gone. We got gone. All got killed and gone. <laughs>
sitting right here since 7 o'clock. Yes, with your back to me. When I invite a woman to dinner, I expect her to look at my face. That's the price she has to pay. You check, sir. $9.40? This is an outrage. If I were you, I wouldn't pay it. Stuart? Ah, come right ahead. Hey, Stuart. 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 the food! We've been waiting all the food. afternoon. You're fired, do you understand? You're fired. Hey, you big bully, what's the idea of hitting that little bully? Will you kindly let me handle my own affairs? Get out. Now, what do you got to say to me? Just this. Can you sleep on your stomach with such big buttons on your pajamas? Why, you... Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. During the next presentation, may I request your absolute silence, for I have a message of great importance for everyone in the audience. Now remember, please, absolute quiet. Either he's dead or my watch is stopped. photographs. Why, I haven't one. I can let you have my footprints, but they're upstairs in my socks. Any closer, I'll be in back of you. I got a message from the man on the moon for you. Just you. And a blue bunnish in the water together. A hypey, hypey, hypey. If I lose my cast, I'll sue him. If I lose my backer, I'll kill him. Now, oh, Gordon.
only a prop, darling. Wagner, Baker, get in that bed. You gotta play sick. Christine, sit over there and play nice. Baker, get in there and start groaning. We could dump him in the alley. Oh, no, no! Let's take him down the service elevator. I won't have him insulted. He'll go with the regular passenger. Well, someone might see us. Oh. Come on. Oh. you please, and Mr. Carter. What is it? Can I have a month off next August? What for? Well, you see, I just got a word from my lawyer. He got me a divorce. And one month every year, I win to the custody of my wife's parents. Who blind loves babes in the wood? We've got it all so bad, but isn't it good? We're on a bumpy road, it's true. But heaven is in view for two blind love. Perhaps you'll think I'm forward, but last night when I first saw you... And slammed the door in my face. I realized that you're the man I've been dreaming of. What do you eat before you go to bed? seating arrangements for your final approval. Oh, no, Whitcomb. Judge Chenock will sit on my left hand, and you will sit on my right hand. How will you eat? Through a tube? Two-gun quail. Boys, sweep them out of the gutter. It's just like a movie.
ride, we don't know where, but the horses do the work, so we don't care. It's clippity clock, just clippity clock. Don't be afraid. If any trouble starts, we'll telephone for help. Telephone? This is 1870. Don Amici hasn't invented a telephone yet. I'd keep shy, Luda Bell. She's Red Baxter's girl. Red Baxter? Who's Red Baxter? We'll settle this right now. Where's Red Baxter? Here! Where? Here! Where? Here! You should have been home. The pot of gold called. Yes, just a moment. I have a most important announcement to make. Most important. Now, just calm yourselves. We're not going to take up a collection. Years ago, probably before most of you started to attend the theater, Sarah Bernhardt made a farewell appearance. In fact, she made 14 farewell appearances. She made them each year. And each year, it was more profitable. Each time, the public flocked to the theater to bid farewell to the divine Sarah. Now, after, lo, these many years, there is to be another farewell. The Marx Brothers are retiring from the silver screen. That's right, folks. We're on our way. That's all right, folks. But where do we go from here? And so, to all of you, a fond farewell. you cared. But since you do, we'll present to you songs and scenes from our first farewell picture, The Big Star, where everything's a goodbye. Goodbye. I have just hired Mr. Flymeal as a floor walker. Well, Martha, we have enough floor walkers. Please. However, if you desire, what experience have you had in a department store? I was a shoplifter for three years. <laughs> I used to do this in vaudeville. Hey, look. It's only a woman. That's a fine. Let there be wine. And women. And the song. And women. And the caviar. And women. If it's you, when a knock comes at my door, if it's you, then I'll rush across the floor. Mayhem and mirth mingle in a wild melange of Marx Brothers buffoonery as the clown princes of comedy 
bring you their inimitable spoof of the Bogart classic in A Night in Casablanca, starring the looniest triumvirate in motion picture history, Groucho, as the harried manager of Hotel Casablanca, who is marked for death, Chico, as Groucho's self-appointed bodyguard, and sometime house detective, Harpo, who silently uncovers a stolen Nazi treasure, and outwits a Nazi spy played by Sig Ruman. You'll cheer when he breaks the bank in Casablanca. You'll scream with joy as you see him in a duel to the death with a trained swordsman. You'll roar with laughter when Groucho swings at some fast curves thrown by delectable Lisette Ferreira. Mystery and romance lend spice to this bubbly broth of Marxian mirth and merriment as the world's funniest comedy trio spends a night in Casablanca. before you died from eating poison food? This food doesn't like any more poison than any other hotel food. Give me Oh, no, boss, look. You got to have somebody to test the food. What do you need is a guinea pig. You eat the guinea pig. I'll stick to this. Give me I my steak. I don't mean a real guinea pig. I mean a human guinea pig. I don't want to eat any kind of a guinea pig. I want my meal. Nah, there's a human guinea pig. He looks like a pig, but he doesn't look human. <laughs> We take no more chances with Cornwall. We get rid of him tonight. Tonight? Yes, you will make a rendezvous with him later. Some quiet corner away from the hotel, say uh, 11 o'clock. Exactly what corner? Rue Lafayette. Rue Lafayette, very well. Waiter, you will find an excuse to leave here in time. You will drive the car and you will see to it that it looks like a traffic accident and make it fatal. Do you remember? Well, yes. Well, I don't, but I'll walk around with you while you rumba. Oh, come on. Hold this till I get back. I'm back. Why can't we go to some quiet place? We could be alone. If I didn't know your voice, I'd have sworn I said that. Nessuno lasci questa sala. Hanno rubato i brillanti dei Romano. E guardate un po' dove sono finiti. Vale la pena di correrli dietro. E i fratelli Mar non si fanno pregare e si gettano a corpo morto in questa frenetica e promettente caccia al tesoro nel film più originale, divertente, movimentato, paradossale, elettrizzante dell'anno. Love happy, it's wonderful to know the meaning of happy. And if I do, all because of you, you're my wife. Heart happy, I'm kiss happy. Whoever would believe that I'd be this happy? Why are skies blue? All because of you. Ilona Messi, più fatalona che mai. In una gara di seduzione e di fascino con la indiavolata Vera Ellen e la bella Marion Houghton, briosa interprete delle più vivaci canzoni. Assisterete ai virtuosismi di Chico con il suo magico pianoforte. Di Arpo con le sue incredibili e patetiche trovate. Di 
groucho elettrizzato dalla biondissima Marilyn Monroe in una rapida apparizione. In cosa posso accontentarla? Che domanda inutile. Frugalo, lui ha i brillanti veri. Ah, ho paura di trovarci un cadavere. Vi dispiace chiudere la persiana? Oh, happy, oh, happy. Wonderful to know the meaning of happy And I know why all my dreams come true Cause you're alive